Hi there, today we're going to look at the calculus of motion. Um, now you might find it a little helpful to understand some of the key things when dealing with motion. Um, so some terminology, we've got displacement, we've got velocity, we've got acceleration. So usually displacement we can write as an S, velocity we can write as a V, and acceleration we can write as an A. For those who do physics, this should be very easy and very familiar to you guys. And if you're not doing physics, that's fine. Let's just quickly describe these two things and we can start applying them using calculus. Now S being our displacement, that is you know, a distance that is traveled from the start to the end point um, of any particular motion. So it'll be a length, it'll be a distance measured in meters or whatever other unit you can use there. Velocity is your rate of change of displacement. So velocity is basically your change in displacement over your change of time. Whenever we refer to a rate of change, it means how does that thing change with respect to time? Um, and then acceleration is your rate of change of velocity. So it's your change in velocity over change in time. How does your acceleration or your velocity change with respect to time? So let's look at an example equation where we put an equation down for the displacement of an object. So let's write this as S of t. That means S is our displacement in terms of t, which is our time, can be equal to, for example, 3t cubed minus 2t squared plus 4, as an example, which means our S is the displacement at any given time, T. To figure out the displacement at any given time, substitute the time that you want in seconds to get the displacement. Now, what we can see here, since we're dealing with the rate of change, when we're dealing with calculus initially, you know, the, the rate of change or the derivative is what we used. So now what we can actually see is to get from my displacement to my velocity from here to there, it's the rate of change, which means I can actually use a derivative, right? So that means ds by dt is the same thing as my change in s over change in t. So if I find the derivative of s with respect to t, I actually get my velocity. And in the same way, to get from v to a, it's fi finding my dv over dt. Finding my derivative of velocity with respect to time will give me my acceleration. So we can see that in this case, we've got our displacement here in this expression that we've written there. If we want to find our velocity, for example, what we can then do is say, well, our velocity is going to be equal to the derivative of our displacement. Then we can find the derivative simply using our power rule. So we've got 3t cubed becomes 9t squared minus 4 and obviously our constant falls away in that particular space. Now we've got a new equation, which is our velocity with respect to time, that we can now find the velocity at any time t if we just substitute a, a value of time, so 3 seconds, 4 seconds, or whatever it is, to find the velocity at that point. Let's take this a step further and say, well then, how do we find our acceleration? So we can see now our acceleration, uh, sorry about that, Okay, let's take this a step further and then find our acceleration with respect to time. And like we said, our acceleration is the derivative of our velocity. So our acceleration, which is going to be equal to the derivative of our velocity with respect to time. Please note, actually, that our acceleration can also be the double derivative of our displacement. Um, and then that's going to become 18t minus 4. So these are the equations we've got for us, our displacement, our velocity, and our acceleration. And now whenever you get asked different kinds of questions, we can answer them in whatever way we need to work them. So let's find an example that we can then do together, um, similar to what you'd find in a past paper or an exam or anything that's like that. Okay. So the question that we're going to deal with is going to look as follows. So the question then says, the displacement in meters of a car, um, t seconds after going through a traffic light, is given by the formula st is equal to 10t minus 0.5t squared. So they've given us there st is equal to 10t minus 0.5t squared. That is our displacement at any time interval t. So the first question of the car is what is the initial velocity of the car? So A, they want to know what is my initial velocity. Now again, note that the initial velocity is the velocity at t is equal to 0 seconds, right? So my initial velocity, that is basically my v at t is equal to 0 
seconds. So now we've got our displacement, not our velocity just yet. So let's actually first find the velocity of our expression by finding the derivative of our displacement. So my velocity with respect to t is equal to my displacement, uh, the derivative of my displacement with respect to t. And that's going to then become, from the top there, we've got 10t, which becomes um, t, sorry, that's my mistake, 10t sim simply becomes 10 minus 0, 0,5t, which means 2 times 0, 0,5 is simply 1, minus 1t, and then we have to minus the 1 from the power, which is just simply minus t. So that's my expression for my velocity at any given time. To answer a, we need the velocity at 0 seconds. So we need to find the velocity uh, at 0 seconds, so the v of 0, which means we're going to substitute 0 wherever we see our t, which equals 10 minus 0. That gives us 10 meters per second, not per second squared, sorry, just meters per one second. Okay, so there's our velocity given in that particular case there. Now they're asking, what is the car's maximum displacement? Okay, so to find your maximum displacement, we have to ma maximize or optimize our displacement function. And if you think back to optimization, we learned that to maximize a function, you need to then find the first derivative, make it equal to zero, and then find out um, at what time frame that will be. Okay, cool. So to find the maximum displacement, let's first maximize our function. So we're doing part B of our question now. Okay, let's do it here next to it, B. So then to find the maximum, we have to first take our first derivative, which is our, our velocity, which we already have. Let's make that equal to zero. So our maximum displacement occurs when our velocity is equal to zero. Right? That means we're going to have 10 minus t equals 0, which means our t is equal to 10 seconds. So note that we haven't answered our question. We've merely found where our maximum displacement occurs, which is at 10 seconds. Now, to find what the displacement actually is, we need to substitute our 10 seconds back into our equation for our um, displacement. Let me use a different color quickly. For the substitution, So we need to find the displacement at 10 seconds, which is going to be 10 times 10 minus 0, 0,5 times 10 squared. So that'll give us 10 times 10 is 100 minus um, 10 squared is 100 times 0, 0,5. That's going to be 50. So 100 minus 50 simply gives us 50 meters. So that's the actual final question, the maximum displacement of our object. Now, what is the car's acceleration after 10 seconds? So let's do that down at the bottom here. So part C, the acceleration after 10 seconds means we must first find the equation for our acceleration. Again, remembering back at the beginning, to get our acceleration from our velocity, we need to then find the derivative of our velocity. Okay, cool. Now, the velocity we were given or that we worked out is 10 minus t. So to get the derivative of that, we can just simply derive that. So now, first finding our acceleration with respect to time is finding the derivative of our velocity, which will simply just be um, negative 1. And what we can see there, because our expression for acceleration has no variable, it's actually independent of time. So it doesn't actually matter what time the acceleration occurs, we have a constant acceleration all the way throughout. So you can simply say, well, at that point, my acceleration is going to be equal to negative 1 meters per second squared. All right, and the negative simply signifies the fact that it's in the opposite direction, meaning I'm slowing down in that particular case. So that's an example of some of the questions you guys might get using the calculus of motion. That's a short little descriptor of how to use it, and I hope you can go and practice, practice, practice to get better and better at doing some of these problems to finally get your A 